Welcome back. She is one of the craftiest women we know today. <laughs> Jennifer Ackerman Haywood from the Grand Rapids Press and CraftSanity.com is here to show us how to make homemade knitting needles. And I was imagining this, you know, while I was reading through your materials, and then they're spectacular. Well, you know, I've been collecting sticks since I was a kid on camping trips. <laughs> yes. And now I finally know what to do with all those sticks. It's really neat. Yeah, and we're going to do two versions of this. Of this. We're going to do a primitive version, and this is just basically sticks from my backyard at my old house at a cottonwood tree, uh -huh. and I really miss it. So I have <laughs> knitting needles now. Um, and the cool thing about this is even if, I mean, obviously the diehard knitters, if you want to have a sweater that has perfect gauge, you're not going to want to use yeah. handmade or hand whittled knitting needles, but um, these are nice as a decoration even. Well, and they're beautiful, and I kind of like the jiggity jaggedy, you know, yeah, you know product they would create. Yeah, so if you're going to, if you want to do that, we'll start with that. Um, Basically, I love going outside and just seeing what picking up sticks. And um, what I'll do, what I do here is just just pick up a stick. It's nice if it's dried out a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting there. Now's a great time because after the winter, you can find some nice sticks. And make sure you know I just have a little carving knife. I think I got this from Woodcraft on 28th Street there. And you just make sure you carve away. And you can decide if you want to take all the bark off on the one out here in the front. I did not take all the bark off. Yeah, that's um, kind of neat just, too. So you kind of decide, you know, how, how you want to do it. And usually the way I, d I do this is I'll, I'm not going to take all the bark off this whole stick here. But what I'll do is I'll clear a whole, you know, take all the bark off and then get out my sandpaper. I just use medium grit and just go over it. You know, you want to get the rough spots off. Yes. And I've worked on this one a little bit. And then the next thing you do is you get steel wool. Uh -huh. And this you can get at... Um, you know, any kind of woodworking store as well. Um, and this smooths things down and just kind of shines it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you can move over to, um, it's a, a natural cream beeswax. And this is optional. You don't have to do this. If you've sanded it down and smoothed it out, you don't have to yeah. put beeswax on. But the benefit of that is what? Well, it kind of seals it a little bit and oh. it also brings the natural grain and shine of the wood out. So it's really, you almost don't know what it's going to look like until you, you do that. You cool. also can, um, if you want to, you can use stains. Um, I usually do more staining of my hand than the actual needles. <laughs> um, so that's an option as well. Um, the easiest way, though, if you don't want to go outside and get a, you know, pick up sticks, um, you can go to the craft store, and they sell dowels already cut. You know, these are kind of long for knitting needles, but they'll work. Mm -hmm. um, also, you can go to the hardware store, and you can get these long, gigantic pieces here. And you can make, if you're going to do double point uh, needles, you can get about a set of five out of one of these very long. Very so, nice. So yeah, and I actually went to, if you go to a um, um, wood source, they have um, like cherry wood and walnut, which All is very in, nice, yes, already in a dowel form. So I'll tell you what to do next then. What I, what I did is I cut um, just this walnut piece into five seven inch pieces. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like this, you know, get done. And I use a coping saw. You can use a skill saw if you have a lot of power tools around your house, you can do this. Um, if it's really thin, you can even almost use your garden clippers yes. and just cut it. Yes. Um, a coping saw is about five bucks, so not very expensive. So you get this little piece here. And then you just grab your pencil sharpener yes. or your child's and sharpen it just like a pencil. Get have yourself a little point. Yeah, to get a little point. You don't want to have it be um, like an actual pencil. You don't want it, the tip to be that drastic there because yes. you don't want to poke your... You don't want to have dangerous knitting. Yeah, knitting needles. They're not weapons. Yeah. And then <laughs> I just go back to the sandpaper and just kind of... Now, before we run out of time, you sand sure. that down to make sand a, it down. a smooth, beautiful tip, and then you and then put some neat ends on On the these. tops, you can put everything from buttons, uh, old buttons, um, beads you can glue on the top. Um, the ones, these are um, wooden, they look like bobbins. They're so, darling. And you can get these just at um, any kind of craft store. Really quickly, yes. your Sunday column, you're going to be uh, critiquing craft books. Yes, and there's so many great ones out. And actually giving people a chance to The one to on one. the end is my favorite. I made a dress, I think, mm -hmm. from page. Um, 80 something. Here. Yeah, uh -huh. um, from that book. I love it. It's um, by Heather Ross and uh, Weekend Sewing. Really fantastic book. And since I love it so much, I want to give it away to a, a reader and or a, a viewer. Yes. Anybody who's crafty is interested. And look at the column this weekend in the home section of the press for information on how to win. All right. You can also find more information on our website, WZZM13.com. Just click on Take Five Links. Jennifer, thanks so much. When Thank we come you. back, Tamara Mowry from Sister Sister talks with us about our new show, Roommates. Stay with us.